Hello, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel. And today, this is Fabulous Fun Fold Friday. And so we're going to take a look at folding paper and using it for pockets in a different way than we have done in the past. So I have tried this a couple of different ways, and I have a whole bunch of different weights of paper here. And it's really what today is going to be about, is experimenting with paper. This was the first one that I did and I used a sheet of music paper. You can see it's a rectangle and it really doesn't matter what the paper is as long as it's a rectangle. The problem I have with this particular piece is that it is very, very thin. The paper itself is thin and it's, it's not gonna hold up well. There are a lot of pockets. There's one pocket in the back, two pockets, three pockets, and then a tiny little pocket. And then, of course, you could always put one in the back, but I think that would be a little hard with the two points. So there's at least four pockets. You could make it a fifth. You could make it a side pocket on here. That would probably work well, work better than another top pocket. Um, so we'll call it a five-fold pocket. But this paper was too thin, and I made three of them before I decided, you know what, it's just too thin, and it's just not going to work very well. Um, I am going to end up ripping the paper more often than anything else. So yeah, we're not going to do this with this paper. So these have been hanging around literally for months. Um, and I figured I'll just rip them up and use the, the, uh, scraps some other way. So that's what I started. Then I thought, well, maybe I could do it with a piece of book page. This was from, um, a flower encyclopedia. And I thought I can do it with that. And that actually worked out pretty well. I like that weight. I tried it with a piece of Tim Holtz paper. This came from this pack of paper. Nope, not that pack, hang on. It came out of this pack of paper and it, it doesn't have a weight on it, but it's a really, really heavy paper. I didn't like it. You can see it took me a couple of times to get the folds right because it was so stiff and it was really, I like the size. If you see, it's a little bit bigger than, than these. I like the size better, but I just didn't. And this was uh, six, a six by 10 piece of paper. And this one was um, just under nine, just under seven. So just a little under, you know, seven, basically seven by nine. Okay. We're going to come back to those. And then this was an eight and a half by 11. This was a full size, full size sheet of paper. It is a medium weight and I, I like it. And when you put it into a journal, let me find a page here that it could go on. Um, it just fits. Let me get under. Here we go. So it just fits if you use an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So what I'm going to tell you is if you want to craft along with me, go find yourself a bunch of rectangles, have different weights, uh, and let's, let's play. So what I have here, I'm going to start with this one and we'll, st we'll, this one is not, obviously doesn't have a, a very straight edge at the top, and that's okay. This particular piece is 10 inches tall by 7 inches wide. And the first thing you want to do is bring your paper up. You're going to take it from the bottom corner. You've got it here. You're going to kind of tilt it sideways. Take it from the bottom corner and make it so you have two mountains that are of equal distance. So you have two equal mountains up at the top. But you want to make sure, and this is where it's kind of key, you want to make sure you are level here and make your fold. That's the first fold. Second fold, you bring this one in so your point is pretty much lined up here. So if I put my point there and I bring it here, I can, I, don't, I mean, yes, you can measure it, but I don't, I don't, you know me. If you've been with me for long enough, you know I don't measure anything. What you want to make sure though here is that your bottom is lined up. So you're lining up this way and this way. Get that down there. And I'm making my point. And then I just fold this one in so that that point lines up 
over here with that point. Now all I have to do to make my pocket is tuck flap A into flap B. There we go. And it's made. It's that simple. I'm moving my mat on this again. Very simple fold. This is not a hard fold. Let me do it again. Okay, this was a page out of, I think I want this side in. This was a page out of a visual encyclopedia. I'm going to take my bottom corner and I'm going to pull it up so that it's level with my other corner. So I make two mountains, but I want to make sure that I'm level here. I'm perpendicular, so my sides are perpendicular and fold. Then I'm going to bring this one over so that my points are, I'm using my, my uh, mat as a guide roughly, so that roughly my, my point is very close to level here on that plane. And then I'm level here. I've got to make sure I'm, I'm level here. And then I'm going to bring this over. I don't think I'm going to take it over quite so far this time. Make this one a little bit wider because I have plenty of enough room for this one to tuck into here. And then you could just decorate it and stick it in a journal. It can go in your journal anywhere. Poof. Done. Now you've got pockets. And remember, you have a lot of pockets here. You have a pocket back here, a pocket here, a pocket here, a pocket here, and then if you wanted to, you could do a side pocket. Either side. I Like I said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going in the back here because you're going to get caught up on these points. And I, besides which, I really like the way the points look against the page. Isn't that cool? So if you stick something back there, you're going to miss that point. Better off if you have some, if you really want another pocket to go to the side. All right, so that was with that kind of page. Let's do it out of a piece of map. So this is out. This is a Louis says a Louisville. I'm going to put you straight up. Uh, actually, you know what? I am going to. Hmm. Normally, I put my rough edges up at the top, but I'm just curious. Let's give it a shot. What happens if I put my points at the bottom? Okay, I've got my point, I've got my two mountains. I have my straight edges parallel. I'm going to bring this one in roughly halfway, or a third of the way rather. And then bring this one over to here. Obviously, I have Kentucky here. Sorry, I'm going to cover up Kentucky by tucking that in. So there I've made one with a map. We'll decorate these in a minute. Now this one's a little bit big. I don't know, this one might be too big for my page. No, it's, it still fits. I didn't measure this. Let me measure this paper. I don't remember how big this paper was. This was just from um, out of an atlas. And it is 11 inches by eight. So yeah, it'll it'll fit. It'll work. Now I could tuck this side into here as well. I have a tendency to tuck the shorter end in just because I like it better, but you can do it either way. All right, let's take a piece of cardstock. This is a little bit heavier weight cardstock. Um, it is one of just a scrap of one. You can see probably my edges are different here. Same thing. I'm going to take my point and I'm going to bring it up so I'm level with these guys. This, By the way, this is uh, just a little over nine inches by five inches. So we're going to see how it works with different sizes. This one, okay, my points are level. This is a little bit heavier cardstock, so it's a little harder to work with. Bring my first flap in, my left flap in. Bring my right flap in. And then tuck. 
and that makes a somewhat narrow one. Now, obviously, we could decorate these. Um, I have all sorts of, hang on, where's my red ones? These are my red ones. I can put a number on it. I can tuck it down under. I can add a, a bigger label. I don't thought I had a bigger label here. Nope. These are all numbers. The red ones are all numbers. I do have some blue ones here that are labels. That one looks like a stamp. But you get the point. You, I, I'm not really going to decorate these. You can do whatever you want with them. You can certainly take some time and edge them. Depending upon, and what I would do, if you wanted to do this to them, in fact, let me do it to one. Let me grab this piece. This is a piece of, uh, this is a might be a little bit too square. I'm going to cut this one down just a little bit. And I'm not going to bother getting out my trimmer because it's buried at the moment. So I'm going to cut this down more to a rectangle. Set that aside. We'll use that for something else. And I'm going to go ahead and do this to all of my edges first. Because it's going to make it easier in the long run. If you, if you intend to distress your edges, do it first. And, of course, this, I picked probably the flimsiest piece of paper. This is from, an, obviously, an old calendar, and um, it's a little bit heavier weight. It's not nearly as fragile as my music paper. See, look, I picked up my music paper and it bent. That music paper was just too, too fragile to use for this. So, nice size. I like the shape, but just not going to work for it. All right. Now, I'm just going to set that there. I'll put my top on for a minute. Grab my sheet there. Now, we're going to do this. I have to do it right side up because otherwise the seven will drive me crazy if it's upside down. All right, I'm going to line me, myself up. I'm going to make sure that I am. Now, I can go. I'm just going to be a little bit thicker. Okay, I want to make sure I'm parallel here. There's a nice line right here that I can use to line myself up going to come in. This one's going to, okay, this one's not going to work quite as well, I don't think. And in. It's going to make an interesting pocket, but it's not going to quite do what I wanted it to. Now, I can either do this one, I might do this way. Well, it doesn't really matter because whichever way I do it, I'm going to lose the numbers. There we go. I should, you know what? We could do this this way. Watch this. We're going to fold it the other way. So I don't lose the numbers quite so much. And this way I'm doing it better anyway. There we go. Now I have my numbers. Now see, at this point, because I didn't fold that in far enough, they don't actually match. So I would have to just, well, let's face it. I've made a mess of this one. I have made a total mess of my calendar one. I just folded it over a little bit more. So now it tucks. Ish. Yeah, that one's a mess. We, we aren't going to worry about that one so much. But if you wanted to, you could then certainly do your edges as well. So you get my point, even if I mess this one up. All right, should we do one more and then be done for the day? I have one more piece of paper here. This is um, 
This one is a 12 inch. Yes, it's a 12 by six, six, 12 by six and a half. This was a leftover piece from a different project. So this is going to make a very large pocket. Line myself up. Come over. Come on. Bend yourself. There we go. I do like the paper. It's and it's a thinner cardstock. That's why I chose it because it's not as heavy. This was a heavy cardstock, and I've lost it. This one was a really heavy cardstock. That's a very, very heavy. I didn't like it. It was too much. This one was okay. Um, it's not too bad. This one is, is folding like a dream. I like this one. Okay. We fold this into here. I could probably fold that over just a little bit more if I wanted to. But that's much better. So what I like about this one was that it was two-sided. So you got the two different things. I like this because it's two-sided. Um, this was that piece out of a flower book. That's two-sided. Heck, even this is two-sided. And I like, like I said, I like the look on this. The paper itself was too thin. I like the look on this one. This was an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Um... And that's easy enough to throw a little bit of washi over the top of it, and that'll fold up nicely. I like the, the look of the purple. This one's, yeah, okay. This one's, okay. This one's upside down. Um, okay. This one sucked. So I realized this video actually needs a part B. And that is when you go to attach your pocket to a page. And this is a junk journal that I have started working on. I got some pieces done. This is just the first signature out of two. Um, you have to be careful because you have two pieces here. And if you put glue here, you're not going to be able to slide something in here because it's all going to be glued together. So when you glue this on your page, you want to glue only the back mountain. You don't want to glue any other part of it. And if you want to leave that as a side pocket, that's fine. I'm going to do that with this one. So they only want to put it around the top mountain. Now when I put it on my page... I don't know if I like that butterfly or not. I'm going to take it off for the moment. I was just playing around and then realized that I probably should let you know about that back piece. So now when I put my, my uh, card in the back, if I attach that down, I won't be able to put my mountain or my card in. So you want to make sure you leave it open. You've got a spot here, a spot here, a spot here, and now I also have a spot here because I, I didn't, actually it becomes a tuck spot. I don't know if I like it so much on the side. I'm probably going to end up putting that down. <coughs> Excuse me. I do want to show you one that I decorated. I ended up using that page from the calendar that I screwed up on. I put it down here as a backing for this page. And now I have all sorts of spaces here. Hang on. I'm working on a time journal as well at the moment. So I have a time journal but here I have a space I have a space I have a space come on go back in there and I have a space and I didn't do any other sort of work with this one so lots of this one I decorated um, and I chose to put a little washi on it and it just comes around nobody's going to see that part because it's just going to be back there this part's already glued down so when you glue it, when you go to glue your, now where'd it go? There it is. When you go to glue this down, make sure you are not gluing this section down. Because if you do, you won't be able to get it in. Now you could probably, if, you, if you're not making a pocket of it, there's no reason you can't come along this side 
and glue it down. Ah, there we go. Glue, glue that down. So now this side is glued down. It's, you're not going to be able to get anything in it, which is fine. I don't. I'm, I decided I didn't want it as a side pocket. I've got all of my pockets here, which are plenty. All right. Just a little side note. Signing off again. All right. So there is your fun fold, fabulous Friday. It's a, I don't know what to call this fold. Maybe a 2.4 fold, 5 fold. 2.1234 5 fold. 2.5 fold pocket. All right. If you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the like to let YouTube know that you like these, even when I screw up. Uh, and in the meantime, please make sure you're having a good time. Go out and craft. And this is Cindy signing off.